In the words of t -Core, she did that. So, we're on episode 15 of Big Brother 26, and this was, in my opinion, probably the best, in my opinion, probably the best episode thus far. This was a really good episode. If I was bringing a new fan into this show, they've never seen Big Brother ever, I'd probably start them with this episode, because this was really 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 good this was a really good episode i can't even say that enough and this this season is just bringing it it's so good it's literally climbing the ranks of being one of my it, it definitely is one of my favorite seasons already and it's just climbing the ranks more and more and more getting higher and higher on my list but before we even get started with this video i want to show you all something that i filmed literally at like soon as the episode started when the intro was still on i want to show you all this so check this out all right, guys, I wanted to come on here real quick before the episode starts to tell you all my opinion on the episode tonight before it starts. And uh, there it is. It's about 8 o'clock. episode just started, and it's on that big, you know, the long intro that they give where there's a recap of everything to expect or what's been happening. And I just want to say, so with the three people on the block, Rubina, Cedric, and Mackenzie, I really like all of them, and I don't want any of them to leave, right? But... I see that this house flip is happening, and it might happen where Cedric leaves. And I actually don't like that. I was really, throughout the week, trying to think, like, who do I want to leave out of these three? Because Mackenzie is, like, an odd one. She's on the opposite side of everyone. She has no alliance. So she's a wild card. I want her to stay in the house. I wish her biggest rival wasn't Angela, but I really want her to stay. I feel like she's a strong female competitor, and she doesn't have any allegiance, so she could go after anyone. Rubina was my favorite on day one. Day two, day one, those two episodes were my favorite person. And I like Cedric. He's a good person, and I kind of don't want him to leave. I feel like if anyone on that side of the house I want to leave, it would be Cam. Cam is bringing nothing, and he's kind of boring. No offense to him. I'm sure he's a nice person. But I'd rather Cedric stay. He hasn't done anything bad. And to be honest, I came to the conclusion that out of the three, I actually would want Rubina to leave. I'm sorry. But, like, she seems like she's bringing the least to the table as much as I like her. Like, because the person that leaves in this episode, we're done with seeing them. Because they don't make jury, and they're going straight home. So they're they're off for the season. Whoever stays, they have the potential to make jury. And we want the people in jury to be the most entertaining people because we're going to see them for the rest of the season. But I don't want this to be too long. Look like the intro is about to end. So I just want to let y'all know I'm actually rooting for Rubina to leave. I still like T-Core and uh, Chemo flipping, like going against the Pentagon and all that. But the group that they're making is making them the majority now. So I don't like the majority turning on some of the majority to have another majority. You know what I mean? Because if it's Chemo and T-Core and Quinn and Tucker and Angela, that's just another majority alliance, you know? And then they're just against Brooklyn and uh, Chelsea. So... Yeah, but that's my two cents. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch this episode, and I'll see y'all in a sec. So y'all saw that. Y'all see how I felt? Because I, I feel like in my last review, I didn't really, like, emphasize enough that these three, like, I didn't know which ones, I, which one I wanted to go, and I, I landed on Rubina, and I feel really bad because I love Rubina. I love her. I like her more than I like Mackenzie, and I like her more than I like Cedric, but when it comes to the show, I want, like, the best outcome of the show. And, like, my main thing is just a majority alliance. People leaving a majority alliance, but they're taking majority of that majority alliance to some to a other side, to the minority side, and making that the majority. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's why I'm just, like... Because now, like, it's a huge alliance again, but it's just against Brooklyn, Chelsea, Cam, and Quinn. You know? So it's, like... <laughs> that's why I kind of just would have rather had Cedric stay so it could still be like, you know, even size against each other, kind of. But let's start from the beginning. So it's post-veto ceremony where Rubina's now on the block. We get a lot of DRs and Quinn just sounds cocky, saying that he put Rubina on the block and the closest thing to Tucker, so he puts Rubina up, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. We get Cedric, who also was pretty cocky, talking about how he's already beat McKenzie, he's beat Rubina every single time they've competed, so he's not scared of them. We get Mackenzie, who actually sounded a little bit more confident when she said that she she feels like her chances of winning the AI arena is has increased now that Tucker's not inside the arena, which I agree with her about that. 
And then Rubina was being her normal, silly, goofy self, which was good to see. Next, we get a scene about the collective. Kimo feels like he's at the bottom of the collective alliance, which this has been like an ongoing thing. We know that the collective has eight people, which then goes to the Pentagon, which has five people, which Kimo knows about the Pentagon because Quinn told t -Core and Kimo. Because Quinn, so let me just say, in this house, this season, there is no real alliances. Honestly, it's not. Because everyone knows, like, there's no secret. I want to look back at season, like, 20, which is my favorite season. Think about how level 6, no one, well, level 6 plus JC. Like, every week, Falte was like, who flipped? Who flipped? Like, that was an ongoing thing because it was a secret alliance. It was a secret. Like, no one knew exactly who was aligned there. Like, they didn't know. Like, Brett put out that speech about Rockstar, and it's like, it's question. But in this house, everyone tells everyone everything. Because then we see, like, an alliance form called Five Points. And Brooklyn told Chelsea, but we didn't see that. T Corp wanted to tell is this no so there's so many alliances and everyone tells everyone everything. So but to go back to what I was saying, what was I saying? Quinn told Kimo and T Corp about the Pentagon. So he so they know about the Pentagon from him. They don't know about it from Chelsea, and I don't think they know about it from Brooklyn. But Chelsea and Brooklyn are most loyal to the Pentagon. Quinn is most loyal to his I forgot what it's called. Uh, alliance with t -Core and Kimo, which makes sense. That seems like the, the three that he would be more cool with. Quinn feels like he's at the bottom of the Pentagon Alliance. He felt like him and Brooklyn were at the bottom, but now, as we've seen live feed watchers or even episode watchers, you, we've seen Brooklyn climb the ranks of the Pentagon to where she's pretty much top dog. Brooklyn's number one, well maybe number two to Chelsea, but I would say the power ranking in the Pentagon is Brooklyn and Chelsea now. And yeah, Yes, Quinn is still all the way at the bottom, but like, I don't think Brooklyn's there anymore. Quinn made a really good point though, saying he doesn't think that they should flip on the collective until Tucker is no longer in the house. Because they have more numbers to take out Tucker, which 100% Quinn is right here. I personally don't think that it was a good idea for t -Core and Quinn to make this move. But that's just me. I feel like they could, should have st stuck right in the middle for a little bit longer. Maybe even just one more week longer. Because, I don't know, like I just feel like you let Cedric and Tucker go against each other. Kind of like what Cedric said in his speech, but we'll get there. So we see a couple people give Rubina a pep talk on how to win AI Arena, how to go in there. Because Rubina really hasn't had to step up yet. She hasn't really, I don't think she's done that many vetoes. She hasn't done super well in HOHs. She hasn't done AI Arena. This is like, it's time for her to step up. So they were pep talking her. And Chemo and t -Core was just... At, in this pep talk thinking like, oh man, we really should flip. And they formed this five points alliance, which I already talked about. This this alliance just wasn't real. Like, Tucker put it together, and it's weird for Tucker. And I'm going to go to this, because Tucker always talks about getting out these strong competitors. And you look at this five points alliance, and it's like, Tucker, you're aligning yourself with, like, you are the strongest competitor. You want to take out strong competitors so you can be the strong competitor. And what do you think is going to happen next? Like, I'm confused. Like, you're friends with Cody, but, I mean, I'm glad Tucker didn't align himself with all alphas, right? Or, like, even, like, not even necessarily alphas, but somebody like McKenzie. Because I feel like McKenzie, she's won a few competitions. She seems like she can win competitions. But the point in this is they formed five points. Brooklyn's in it. It would have been a good point, a good alliance without Brooklyn, but Brooklyn's in it. She says she's most loyal to the Pentagon. Uh, and she... Basically told Chelsea, but it wasn't inside the show. Uh, we see a group of the Five Points Alliance talking right outside the HOH room. And <laughs> so you see Angela all the way on the floor. And she could literally hear them. It seemed like the door was a, a decent amount away from where they were sitting. And she comes out and just asks to join the alliance. And Tucker, <laughs> they said yes. And they called it like the tanks. Like because they were next to a fish tank or something like that. I don't know. Next, we get to the campaigns, and Leah pretty much said that she's down to keep Rubina. Mackenzie says she's down to keep Rubina if she's not on the block. If Mackenzie's off the block, she's down to keep Rubina, should I say. Kimo says he wants to blow up the Pentagon, which that sounds crazy to say out loud when you hear it 
blow up the Pentagon. I'm surprised they put that on TV. It sounds kind of weird. Sounds kind of sus, brother. t Core says something pretty interesting and weird. She said that she trusts Cedric the most out of anyone in the Pentagon. And in my head, I'm like, well, why would you take him out? We get to the AI Arena competition, and I actually like this competition. I didn't think I was going to like it. I think it was called, like, Download, Upload, Reload, or Upload, Download, Reload, something like that. Basically, at first, I didn't even understand it, but then I did. Uh... <laughs> At one point, I was like, this is going to take forever. But they had to roll this ball. It was a, to the middle of this platform. The platform was like this. It had a little, like, there was a stable part in the middle, but it was really thin. And then it went like a slide. They roll the ball up, get it to stick. They have to get five of them up. Then they get a smaller ball, and they have to knock those five down. Then they press a button. When it started... I was watching Cedric do this, and I was like, boy, are you nervous? Because he was really bad at this. Like, he just was throwing it way too hard, and they just kept going off. Mackenzie was doing really good. She got one really fast. She got two really fast, and then she had three, and then she was struggling to get four and five. Uh, and then Rubina just out of nowhere got all five, and it's like, oh, goddamn. Like, okay, Rubina, win this. That's what I was rooting for, to win it, was Rubina, actually. Because if Rubina got it, I say that, but it's like... Just, I don't know. I, I like all of them. I, I wanted Rubina to leave, but I also wanted her to, like, win, so then I couldn't have her leave. Like, you know, it was a it was a struggle in my head at this moment. But Rubina got all five. Then she just had to knock them down. She just simply had to knock them down. And she just was looking all around and not paying attention. Don't pay attention to anyone else. Just pay attention to your target. She had this one. Rubina was about to win her first challenge. She had it, but she just was not paying attention. She wasn't focused. She was not locked in. She was paying attention to everything else than what she needed to be paying attention to. And she, right when she went to go press the button, less than a second, Mackenzie had already pressed it. So Mackenzie won AI Arena, which was... The best case scenario for fun feeds, watch this, like, because she has no alliance. She even said it on the show. She has no alliance. She has no allegiance. She is the wild card. And I loved it. I loved it. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, oh, man, Rubina versus Cedric, I was just like, let's go. Here we go. This is the best case scenario for us who wants to see fun feeds. Or not even fun feeds, just a good show. This was great. So they go inside and... Cedric seems nervous as hell. He's already, like, kind of campaigning, kind of saying stuff. Well, actually, the reveal happens. Like, the cheers, the claps, it's been going down each week. Mackenzie's was so fake. Like, they did not cheer for, for they weren't very loud, and they didn't cheer for very long. And I know she had to feel some type of way about that. Like, she was going home. She was out the door. But she won, so she'll be here another week, at least. Immediately, the campaigning starts. They start put this. They actually do pull people into a room. I think Cedric pulled in Chemo, T Core, and Angela, and he was just trying to. He was really trying to convince them to keep him. Like he was campaigning. He knew he might be going home tonight, and he was campaigning. And Brooklyn looked like she was talking to Rubina, and this did not look like a good conversation. It looked like she was telling her she was voting her out. And Brooklyn. <laughs> This is, this is not going to age well. Oh, man, I love Brooklyn so much, but I don't think her chances, her chances of winning this season has went so far down compared to where it was at. It's, just, it's so bad now. It's bad for Brooklyn. I really liked her. It's unfortunate. For some reason, Cedric decided to campaign to Tucker, I guess. Cedric is so positive, so nice. I say this every single time I get on camera. He's just... The sweetest person. I really like him a lot. I really wish that he did not leave this early in the game. He should have never volunteered. I would much rather it have been Cam. I'm sorry. But yeah, if anyone in the Pentagon, Cam is my least favorite. And I wish he would have been. I'm sorry, Cam. I, I, I don't mean to be like that. But as far as entertaining, Cam is not entertaining. So I would have much rather been Cam than went home out of this like this whole everything could have happened but replace Cedric with Cam like I would have loved that oh man but Cedric campaigns to Tucker like Tucker's really gonna keep Cedric over Rubina that make no sense but I guess and he knew he was probably gonna leave but Rubina also thought she was gonna leave so it was it was back and forth so then we get to the votes well the speeches first Rubina had a basic speech it was really sweet she's a sweet girl she's really nice I like her there's a reason why she's my number one favorite on episode one and two. Cedric speech. He's yelling, trying not to cry. He's just, 
I'm not gonna call this man sweet and nice and the perfect, like, he's the fucking perfect, well, I'm not gonna say he's the perfect player, because he's definitely not, so, that's, I mean, he's leaving week four, but, as I really like him, I really, really wish he would have not been the one to leave, but his speech was good, he's the youngest person in the house, he said he's learning from all of them, he really wanted to stay, uh, we get to the votes, and, yeah, immediately it was 3-0 for Cedric to leave and then it was Chemo's turn and Chemo voted Cedric out and I was like oof it's not looking good T-Core votes Cedric out then we get to Chelsea who I don't think she knew what was going on cause she voted like the way her how she was compared to everyone else she seemed like oh the plan is we're getting rid of Rubina and you know like she seemed like she didn't know what was going on and she voted out Cedric. Also, so the only three people that voted out Rubina were Chelsea, Brooklyn, and Cam. The core and Brooklyn. So, or is that the whole Pentagon? Except Quinn. Because Quinn couldn't vote. And Angela couldn't vote as well. Cedric's evicted. And this was like the loudest eviction ever. Like, soon as she said it, like, Rubina's like, oh my god! And like, Cedric's yelling as always. It's alright, it's all love. He's a very positive person. He's, I'm not going to go on a rant about him again. really wish he would have stayed. He grabbed his stuff. He said he wished, it'll be interesting to know where the votes lie. He went and had his interview, and he he hit the nail on the head. Like, he thought Brooklyn, I guess Brooklyn was his number one ally. I remember last episode, I said, I wonder who, or last video, I said, I wonder who his number one ally is. I guess it was Brooklyn. Brooklyn really was the top of the Pentagon. Uh, he voted. He said that he thinks she kept him, and she didn't. He didn't even know about Chelsea. He was questioning Chelsea and Cam. But then, like, when he guessed those two, and Julie said it was right, he's like, "Oh, shut up, my big sis." Uh, so I really like him and Chelsea's relationship. I really wish I would have got to see it go a little further. Like, unfortunate. To be honest, I would have rather seen Chelsea leave than Cedric. Personally, I really liked Cedric. He's a good person. Like, I don't know, like, you look at the feeds and you see, like, Cam, who talked about Brooklyn looking like Michael Jackson, which was just rude to say on TV in front of everybody, right? And you look at Brooklyn and how she, or not Brooklyn, I'm sorry, but even Brooklyn, she said some controversial things. You look at uh, Chelsea, who said some controversial things. And then, like, you look at Cedric, who's so innocent, hasn't said nothing, didn't do anything, he got yelled at and treated so bad by Tucker and just stood there respectfully. I'm not going to defend this man no more. He's definitely one of my favorites on this season. Not going to lie, I'm talking myself into it, but he will be missed, definitely. And I really hope that he gets brought back for another season or another show or something. I would love to see him on the challenge. Bring him to the challenge. Let him do something. I, I want to be friends with this guy. I love Cedric. We get the news about the AI instigator and it seems like nothing special. We vote for somebody who's going to be Tucker. It's going to be Tucker, let's be honest. And they're going to get use AI to talk to the house. But since they already did the nominee thing where America voted, I'm pre everyone in the house knows what America thinks about them, right? They already know that. So everyone in the house pretty much knows, oh, America likes Tucker. They like Tucker, they don't like Quinn. So America, of course they're going to give it to Tucker. So the AI, everyone's going to know who's doing it. Everyone's going to know. So I don't really know about that twist. It's not really that fun to me at all. <laughs> like, give it to Tucker, he's going to win. I say that and then watch, like, Angela win. Which, I think that would be second choice, Angela. Oh, and we have a wall competition, so I should watch some of that live. That would be fun. I should watch some of that live. But that's it, guys. I was, this was a great episode. Like I said, if I had to show a new fan of Big Brother an episode, it would probably be this one. Definitely for this season. Great episode. Uh, be sure to leave this video a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms of social media. Let's have a discussion about this season and this episode. And until next time, catch y'all later.